We're in the early stages of what I'd call a new China, where the Chinese authorities, uh, in addition to trying to move the place west, are deliberately focused on the quality of the growth and not so much the quantity. To me, it's a, it should be a brilliant environment for genuine stock pickers or company pickers, but for, for general macro investors, I think it's possibly a bit of a graveyard because it's very complicated. Mexico is arguably the biggest winner of the new China. And today, uh, major auto companies around the world are falling over themselves to, to go to Mexico to produce. And they are the fastest rising exporter uh, of autos in the world. The mints are really just four countries that are part of a group that I call the Next 11. And they happen to be, in the case of three of them, the three except Nigeria, are already more than 1% of global GDP. And they've all got fantastic demographics. I know from the, the many people I've talked to, people think I am nuts to have even contemplated including a crazy place like Nigeria as part of it. But if you go and hang out in Lagos, uh, particularly with some of the returnee business community, uh, it's quite easy to get uh, excited about some of the business opportunities. At the end of the day, economic growth uh, is driven by two things, the, the size of the workforce and their productivity. And it's as simple and as difficult as that. And everything else, uh, is, unless they're part of the productivity issue, sort of incidental. You've got to allow foreign companies to come in to help do things to boost your productivity. I and mean, it's obviously a big issue in the BRICS too. Out, out of all the BRICS and the mints, China is the only one that's kind of got that right. They deliberately invited in all these huge multinationals, knowing that that's the way to boost your productivity. China uh, has huge issues with corruption. It hasn't stopped it growing by 10% for each of the past three decades. China's lifted 400 million people out of poverty, despite the fact they have a lot of corruption. You get growth and take people out of poverty, both the incentives to and the ability to preside over as much corruption go down. So to get wrapped up on you can't grow because of corruption is, is almost definitely, in my opinion, and it, it comes from experience of traveling around these places, it's wrong. You can't sort of have some kind of almighty act of faith when you're dealing with very young countries that have only, in some cases, only been democracies for 20 plus years, uh, you know. They can't be like you tomorrow, and you have to accept that that's the case.